What is going on, people? Ryan Leary, William Tim Cup here with another episode of The Barf. A look at this week, so you can. What do I say? A look at what there was, back. so you can be. <laughs> Let's start that over. We're no, not no, 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 no. It's it's, but it's good for the folks to to kind of hear it like this. It's like yeah, this is, is it, the John Oliver show. Is it the John? Okay, it's the week. It's the look at the week that was. So right. you could prepare for the week that is. There now that I look like a total nah, nah, douche guy. Nah, nah, nah. What's going on, man? Not much. How are not you? much. It's a good Sunday. It's bright outside, and uh, <sighs> I can't wait to get into. I think we have uh, twenty stories or so. We're gonna pitch each other, and so yeah. uh, twenty-two if you're counting. There you go. Yeah. Are you, are, you, are you ready? Let's do it, man. You go first. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So I came across this story on uh, Reddit, which is all kinds of exciting uh, to find a story on Reddit. Uh, so Tesla's head of human resources exit after staff upheaval spreads. Ali Abarello, I hope I said that correctly, has yeah. left the company, joining a handful of other senior execs that have recently departed. And why I think this is interesting, Ryan, is okay. One, as a leader of talent, when is chaos too much chaos? So so for the folks that are out there that are practitioners, okay, you, you've lived through chaos, HR and talent acquisition, mm-hmm. you're just going to have some level of chaos. But when does it reach the threshold where you're just peace out? That's the <laughs> first thing. Yeah. And the second thing is, what will Ali do next after Tesla? Yeah, I, I, what, I, think, what think? I, I think it's... When chaos becomes too much is when people can't be at their desk and work. When Mm. there's more water cooler chatter in the employee population, right? Right. There's more water cooler talk than there is actual productivity. Uh, Or in leadership, when shit's just not getting done, right? Like people are distracted. They're not having meaningful conversations. There's backdoor talking. It's time to go. The other thing I think of when I hear something like this is she just had enough. She's like, you know what? Peace. I care about the company. I'm just I, I need something new, and I'm out. And this is the reason. I don't know. I don't know the situation. Of course, yeah, I don't even. No one knows. No one really just, knows. Yeah, this is just just my thought. So good stuff. Yep. All right. So the jobs report came out for April. Have you taken a look at this thing yet? I have. I have. Yeah. Yeah, nothing groundbreaking, right? No. Um, it's just definitely a slowdown in hiring. I'm definitely not an economist here, but my take, right? It's it's there's a slowdown in hiring. Uh, last year, this time, uh, or I'm sorry, in March, uh, just just past March, I apologize. Uh, Three hundred thousand jobs this year, uh, this month. Uh, One hundred seventy-five thousand. So definitely yeah. a, a slowdown. Uh, about a tenth of percent in unemployment increase negligible, nothing there. Uh, what stuck out for me was healthcare, uh, which has always historically had issues on finding new talent and making right. hires. They're leading the way with uh, just over 56,000 jobs. That's what, a lot. What, but what got me, and maybe you know this, I don't know why I didn't know it, or I just never really put thought into it. The average non-farm minimum, or the average non-farm salary, hourly wage, Thirty four dollars and seventy five cents. Yeah, it's high. it's it's I, actually appropriate. I would, yeah, I, when I said high, that's actually wrong. That's actually what they should be paying. Uh, yeah, I, it, it could right. probably be higher, right, for a yeah. living wage. But I, for some reason, I thought it was twenty, twenty two, twenty three, mm-hmm. something no, that's in McDonald's. that range. Yeah, it really yeah, seriously. is. Seriously, uh, yeah, you can get a job really at McDonald's is. for nineteen dollars an hour here. Yeah, so, with the the three point nine percent. Hmm. The the thing on that is that can, that is a two year record of under four yes, percent unemployment. 4%. We haven't had that or seen that since the sixties of yeah. two years of that type of low unemployment. Uh, so that's a trip. But uh, I love seeing the jobs report. I love seeing the ADP report or the BOL yeah. report. But uh, but the thing that the the thing that I got out of that was the 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 consistent so in years past we'll have an up marker uh you know an up or down or an up or down or quarter right. up, quarter down year up year down this is two years where it's been up under four percent yeah yeah so far so that's that's fantastic love it okay let me pitch you this story 
which I got on uh, Forbes.com, so you can read the rest of the story if you like. Why hiring managers are widening their gaze, uh, gaze, 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 <laughs> not gaze, gaze, right, G-A-Z-E, G-A-Z-E, away from the Ivies. So COVID, technology, uh, changing workforce, they've uh, led to employees cast a wider net for fair collegiate talent, even as they sour on Ivy League grads. Love this because it was kind of coming from the hiring manager's perspective. So one, I'll throw it at you uh, in three ways. Is this a result of paying less and getting more? Meaning, go to Texas A&M. Actually, going to, I don't necessarily have to pay him a Harvard salary or mm-hmm. a Harvard salary, and I'm going to get a better student or a better skill set. Uh, two is a skills based hiring. Just simply, you know, doesn't matter what the name on the degree is. Is do you have the skills? Or three, the impact of DEI programs. So those are all false choices. It could be completely something else. But what do you think? Why do you think if if hiring managers are uh, if they're souring or in Ivy Leagues, why do you think that is? I love all three of those, man. <laughs> that might be three of the most intelligent things I've heard you say all week. Like, did somebody I, write that AI write that for you? No, that was no, pretty no. Fucking good. I was like, I was like, hey, I, I was going to throw a joke in there and be like, because they don't like protesters. I don't know. <laughs> but, hey, you know what? I've got nothing. All okay. three of those are. It's going to be a combination see, of all three. Yes, I can see arguments yep. for all three, maybe less on the diversity because I think yeah. the Ivy Leagues over the last probably dozen years or so have really put an effort into that, right? And, yeah. Uh, or at least after, through their after PR not doing programs. something for three years, 100 years, they've you know, finally they've got started, around yeah, to yeah. Yeah. yeah, at least yeah. through their PR programs or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but everything from the skills yep. and, uh, you know, just overall just well-rounded person. I think they get a better return and it is less expensive. I think the, the notion, and I think of the show suits here, yeah, you're yeah. only going to hire lawyers from Harvard. You're also so, going to pay $150,000 for an associate that can do the same shit as a $60,000 associate because they haven't got experience. I get it. There's different education. There's different exposure well, and all of that stuff. What you've nibbled around the edges is, uh, is entitlement. So if the, you yeah. know, an MBA from the University of Texas and an MBA from Harvard, they're the same MBAs. They're, they're the same textbooks. Sure. It's a different network. But the it's entitlement the that comes from having a Harvard MBA, that's completely different. Right. Than it is from, a, from, from yep. someone with the university. And it does of create a, a different person. But I, I love all three of those. Are you? Um, I hate New York. I hate New York for a number of reasons. One, I just think that people are just overly smug. Yeah. Second, they ended the Sixers in the first round uh, this past sure. Thursday, yeah. which was just a hell of a series. Yeah. I was a little just yeah, yeah. done, like whatever it is, what it is. However, that said, although I love the people that I know in New York, right? Just we'll just put not, that not out everything. there so they don't hate me. Not every, not all of them. There's some yeah. that I kid. No, uh, but. They are they are now the first state to mandate paid time off for parental care, prenatal care, not or prenatal. Sorry, <laughs> I said sorry. parental, prenatal <laughs> care. No, no, this is this is why editing exists no, no. in our world. No, no, we're not allowed no. to edit. We don't edit. Those, those so things are, those things are very similar. They they are they are they just switched, switched the letters around. It's like Wordle. Um, All right, so starting January of 2025, Mm -hmm. workers in New York who are pregnant Mm -hmm. will also have additional paid time off available outside of the 12 weeks that they have. And this is for For, things like doctor's appointments, procedures, prenatal care, visits, all of that stuff where you generally have to cut in your, your leave time or even your personal time. This is now added on, and New York's the first one to do this. So this Should is be different in every than state. it should be in every state. And I and I think it will. California, I think, has something, but they're not the first, or they have right. something similar. They're they just not. It's not kind of the, yeah. the the law, right? Uh, so this is not part of. Um, this is. Uh, I'm sorry. This is part of New York's sick leave, which is yeah. different than the paid family leave. So it's right, right, important right, right. to know. Yeah, yeah. It, it would. It's great. First of all, it should be just. This is something that every state should adopt. Sure. It, I mean, just make it simple yeah. uh, for people to have. Let's have children. less unhealthy babies. 
you know, let's try that for uh, you know a decade or two <laughs> to see how that goes. Um, and I, I, I would wonder. I'll dig into it, but I wonder if it's for both the parents, you know, so that mm-hmm. so that you know, I'll, I'll take myself as for example. Uh, I did take off for doctor's appointments and stuff like that. So like anytime yeah. Michael went to something, I went. Yeah. But I could because I was an entrepreneur. <laughs> but if that you know what I mean, count. that doesn't. Yeah, count. I know it totally doesn't I, I, count. Use me as an example. Conexa never docked me at the time I was with Conexa. Right. They said go. They never said how long are you going to be. They just said that's the go. way it should be. That's that's, that's a good business be. right there. That's yes. why you love Conexa. That's why it's a cult. No, I'm kidding. We love you, Rudy. So, <laughs> I pitch this one to you. So the White House. Aims to transition nearly 100k federal IT jobs to skills-based hiring. The Biden administration sees skills-based hiring as um, as opposed to relying on college degrees as a key to making up the cyber talent deficit. This was at federalnewsnetworks.com, so you can go read the whole story. And it, this thing tracks for me. Like, so when I read it, I'm like, this is exactly what we should be doing. Just get rid of degree, and especially in cyber work. You know, like mm-hmm. let's just say they define that as cyber work, which some would probably loosely translate into people that uh, are in the security hacking uh, business, etc. Yeah. And so I like. I think it's a great idea. I don't. I'm gonna I'm take the politics. Take the politics out of it for a moment. I don't really care. I just like the idea that the federal government, whatever in whatever form, is saying, you know what? Do you have the skills? Mm-hmm. Great. Let's just talk about the skills that are required for this job. I don't care if you have a degree. And again, like if we are talking about hacking, I don't know too many people. Now, 20 years ago, it was a little bit different because they came out with a CS degree or a uh, yeah, computer science yeah, yeah. degree. But I don't know you people now that 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 hack that actually have degrees. No, so, these are these are people that are in their closets playing games, yeah. doing whatever right. in the, in the right. dark all day. Would, right. would, um, so my mom was a federal employee, right. uh, always a federal employee. And even today, you need a college degree to get in and start at a certain level and do all of this. And, and I think, yeah, it, it's, it's really it's really just a bad practice. And look, the government's been hiring people without degrees right. for yeah, forever, right? They right. hire hackers all the time. They have they have people in places like I could be one. You don't know. I mean, like I'm. You never know. You never know. Like I could be talking to you. People think you're amazing. You're really <laughs> just a spy from Siberia. So what do you got? All right. So I laid off the EEOC. Okay. But I did go to the DOL. Yeah, happens. <laughs> It happens with all addictions. <laughs> yeah, it's, it happens. So DOL issues guidance, uh, AI's interaction with FMLA and FLSA. So I, I feel like this is more about employee protections. Um, okay. uh, so employer to kind of protect employees against retaliation uh, on the uh, from the employer. So anyhow, U.S. Department of Labor issued guidance uh, this past Monday, making it clear that employers remain responsible for compliance with federal laws when adopting artificial intelligence or other automated systems in the workplace. Yeah. Smart. It is. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is it's uh, what they have to do is so the the employers, you know, employers are going to try to get out of everything if they can, as they should. And so what the DOL is actually saying is, no, you're, you're responsible. If you're, if you embrace any type of large language model or this is your chat decision, machine learning, this is you, you made a business decision. And if it adversely impacts your employee, uh, that's on you. So right. I like it because again, we all need guidance and then yeah. the DOL so that, so that companies now know what the guardrails are. Yeah. Their legal, their legal team now knows, okay, Hey, we have some risk here. Yeah, this this is what it is. This is the risk. This is what we need to do. I love it. All right, Ryan. Let me give you this one. Are you a Chipotle guy? I hate Chipotle. I hate the lines. (laughs) I hate the fucking mess in there. They've got food flying all over. (laughs) Hey, this is something we can agree on. I don't like (laughs) Chipotle either. I like Subway until they were stealing the tips of the employees. And, and, you know... I haven't sex with Jared, minors, but, but, but <laughs> different. Can't support that. Focus. So, Focus. so Chipotle. Chipotle, Chipotle. Says, 
a- yeah, whatever. Says avocado <laughs> cutting robot coming soon. The fast like food that. chain also said, <laughs> so it's two stories in one. Uh, the fast food uh, chain also said that it raised prices by 7% in California after the state uh, state's minimum wage law took effect. So let's, we're going to focus on the robot. But it also, <laughs> they kind of buried that in there, kind of like, oh, yeah, and by the way, they raised is it seven percent because the the minimum wage went up. This is at Quartz, so QZ dot com. You can learn a little bit more. I think the guac, if you're a guac person, will get even better because a robot Precisely. won't, won't uh, spit yeah. in your guac because his high school girlfriend broke up from before summer. <laughs> That's just me. That's my fast food experience. Yeah. Is that the robot's not going to do foul things? Uh, it doesn't have that type of, th- it does, just doesn't have that type of thing. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's going to be cool. And again, yeah. not a bad thing. Robots, no. self-checkout, all that stuff. Good yeah. stuff. No, there, there's a couple of things here that's actually pretty interesting to me. One is, I would be curious to know how, where I went immediately when you said that was, how many injuries do they have? Good point. By... 18-year-old, 16, 17-year-old kids rushing because there's 50 people in line. Right. And they're cut. Oh, there goes and my they, finger. And they've taken about 300 milligrams of metal. Yeah. Right. yeah that too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so one, I, I think it's just They're really rushing. Cool. It's just yeah. a different type of rushing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, I like it. I mean, look, we don't, you don't mix milkshakes by hand. You use a machine. Yep. Same thing, right? I'm digging it. When one comes my way, I'll let you know. Okay, Daily Pay uh, breaks into the SMB market. They offer, for those who don't know Daily Pay, they offer earned wages, access, uh, daily. Get it? Daily Pay. Makes yep, sense. Yep. Tab uh, out. What's that? Tab out. Ta- yeah, I thought you said time out. I'm like, all right, time out. Time out. Um, so they break into the SMB market, and they're offering their services now to employers with less than 400 employees. When I think SMB, though, I think 50. Me too. Or less. Yeah. But we'll, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. Uh, sure. So what's interesting here is it, it, it's, this isn't new. They're just now coming into SMB, which I think is really good for smaller employers. And 400 is a small employer, bigger than small business, but small employer. What I think is interesting here was some of the numbers that they put around their announcement that – so sixty more than 60 million people are employed – in companies that are less than four, 400 or less uh, hmm. for total FTEs. Yeah, that makes that's sense. That's a lot. Yeah, that, that's, that's a yeah, lot. But so the, this is a it's thing. a pyramid, right? So the SMB makes up the largest yes. part of that pyramid, then mid-market, and then the top of the market, Fortune 1000, let's say. Right. They're the top of the market. So that tracks. Yeah. So so here's here are the numbers that kind of, that kind of got me. The in, amount of Americans living paycheck to paycheck. So in some cases, week to week. In other yeah. cases, every other week, sixty-two yeah. percent last year. I, That's I'm a actually lot. Not, I'm actually not shocked. Especially coming out of COVID. Yeah, yeah. That's a I'm lot. Not sure. I, well, I think it, I think that number is actually higher. It probably I, is. Yeah, because it, it, it'll go up. The uh, not embarrassment or guilt or shame or any of those types of things, but people not wanting people, other people to know their business. Right. I think I, I could see that people would say, no, 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 it's, or just being op- overly optimistic. Oh, no, no, yeah. we've got plenty, you know, we can always sell the car, you know. Right, And right. But I think that number is higher. I think it's more seven, in the 70s, maybe even Probably. almost 80s. I, I like to know that, I, I'd really like to, I'm sure there's research out there, but I would like to see what is paycheck to paycheck. Is it, okay, I need my paycheck to pay my water bill, or is it, no, I, my expenses are covered. I just right. can't go make a two thousand yeah. dollar purchase. I got to right. save up over three paycheck. Like, what is paycheck? To, is it? I think the it, people that would know that is the uh, the people that are certified financial planners that that network. Right. I think they would know based on savings. Well, let's go so find these you, people and bring them on a show. I think you could get there. I think you could get to the math. By understanding how much is in savings or in assets. Yeah. So either, if you have the assets, okay, you're not living paycheck to paycheck. paycheck. Right. So if you have a 401k, okay, you're not technically living pay, paycheck to paycheck. If you own your house, you're not living paycheck to paycheck. Right. I think, so I think it is a little bit of the, okay, listen, if they're going to turn off the electricity, if we don't pay it on Wednesday, 
You're lo- you are living paycheck to paycheck. That's okay. what I consider a paycheck. And I've been there. Paycheck. Yeah. Many times. So yeah. fair enough. Yep. All right. Let me uh, throw this one at you. I got it at the Wall Street Journal. And uh, what's, Ryan, and don't look at it. So what is the most dreaded word at work? If you were to guess, most dreaded. The most dreaded word, like dreaded something word. I say and someone would sit like, oh. you into a fit of rage. Uh, I don't know. Is it a filler word? Like, um, uh, hey. yo, hey. hey. Yeah. Hey. hey, that's me. Yeah, I say so, that. Hey, so <laughs> I say that when I don't remember somebody's name, like every hey, this time is... someone will. Hey, what's going on? Uh, it's like hey every at work. Day. Hey at work is to get your attention. So imagine it's Teams and Slack and uh, and uh, Google, Google uh, Chat and all that, everything else. It's hey is the word that people are like knocking on the door. Mm-hmm. Hey, and they're just trying to get your attention. And then that's that's what's driving them crazy. It isn't necessarily the word. The word could be any word, you know, whatever. But yeah. what it is is it's 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 the tap on the shoulder. What it immediately mm-hmm. got me to think of is, uh, hey, 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 it's the Fat Albert Show. I, <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a, hey, 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 Oh, God, that's, Fat uh, Albert. That, that's my stand up right there. Big, big, uh, Bill Cosby. Is, uh, is it too yeah. soon? Probably not too soon. No, Anyhow, probably not too soon. Just as as you listen to this, folks, hey, hey, is a word that sits your it sets your your peers into a fit of rage. Oh, there you go. I'm just gonna now say, you, hey, now you know, hey. hey, hey, I have an idea. I've got a story to talk about. What do you got? <laughs> All right, so employ. We love uh-huh. the people over at employ. Uh, yep. They announced a new chief product officer. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You'll tell this story better than I will um, mm. over their acquisitions and consolidations and kind of right. how they're going into the market. But long story short, over the last number of years, they've really focused on every sector of the market. How do we work right. with enterprise, mid-market, SMBs? Um, and the work they've been doing over the last couple of years have really been tying that in. They've made a lot of moves and they've done really good things and it's starting to come to fruition. Uh, that said, I think the next couple of years, they're now positioned, they're in a position now to really kind of own the market. And I think the addition of uh, their new CPO, Dara, is going to really help them with that. So her pedigree is top notch. It's there. I mean, she's been through ADP, Equifax Workforce uh, Solutions, Ultimate UKG. She's led product there, uh, very similar to what she's going to be doing here. And um, yeah, so I'm excited to kind of see where that's at. Maybe we can get her on the call as well or on a show as well uh, yeah. to learn more about what she's going to be doing. I think you need a new, I need, I think they need K1's the one to put all this stuff is the investment firm that put all this stuff together through a series of acquisitions. Let's just go ahead and say 14 as a guess. And Lever, Jobbyte, and Jazz HR as, an AT, as ATSs. Mm-hmm. But they, they also made a ton of other acquisitions. And in all those acquisitions, you've got some really cool technology. You've got some of the people. But, you know, with Pete uh, stepping down and bringing in a new CEO, the CMO had also stepped down or got a new job, whatever. And now you have a new CMO and now you have a new CPO. I think it's a good time for them to just have a fresh set of eyes to say, okay, what do we have here and where do we want to go? And I think it's, I think it's wise. I think it's wise mm-hmm. for K1 and uh, all the customers of uh, of employer are actually going to get something out of this because yeah. someone coming in with a fresh set of eyes are going to say, why are we doing this this way? Yeah, and and then they're going to say, no, we need to go in this direction. Delete that. Add this. You know, and all that stuff, mm-hmm, which mm-hmm. it's going to help everybody. So I'm yeah. I'm super excited. I think nice. it's going to be great for everybody. All right, so we've got some acquisitions to talk we do. about. We do. We do. We do. All right. So, Paystan. Uh, okay. Who I've never heard of before. Yeah. Um, they've they've acquired a a play called Team Pay. Um, okay. So this is kind of like the the Venmo for B two B 
payments. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this is a company that's taking that really is taking note of consumer finance apps like Venmo and Zelle and PayPal, even you know some of these others. B two B payments are complex. We know that right. they're expensive. They're ridiculously slow in many cases. The goal here is to move B two B payments into. 2024, we'll say. Yeah, more of a consumer market. Yeah, in the consumer market, kind of like marketing has done with yeah. with uh, you know a lot of a lot of talent acquisition. Uh, let payments be instant. Let them be free. It's a blockchain play. Um, so anyhow, they can bring it both on the payable and receivable side. I thought this was pretty interesting. I thought you would as well. Which is why I stuck it in lo- there. Well, I love it because again, anything you can make. Because um, employees take on expenses, you know, like like mm-hmm. you know, you fill out the expense report, which there's a lot of technology that makes that a little bit easier. But it, you still got to get paid. So now, getting payments to people, to employees, and in, in some cases, right? Um, the the better, the easier you can make that, the faster you can make that. I think the less anxiety people have around putting stuff on their own card uh, to then be expensed, and then waiting for the expenses to come back. I've always been fascinated by what I call employee financing uh, because what's not factored in generally into employee financing. Okay, so employee financing is you've got an American Express and you put all your expenses, you pay for the flight, the mm-hmm. hotel, all that stuff. You put all that stuff in there and at the end of the month, you put, fill all that stuff out, you put it in, okay, whatever. Well, there's interest being charged on that credit card. Yeah, it sits for thirty days, forty five right. days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't pay never, the interest. They, they don't pay the interest. The next time, if you're lucky. Uh, if if you know, I would I would assume that most employees don't charge back the interest back to their Probably credit cards. So I've always been fascinated by that. So again, we can get out of that with something like this if you can get your money back really fast. Okay. So and uh, cheap and cheese. Yep, can't hate it. So GNA Partners is a uh, Houston-based PEO, and uh, they acquired a, UT, uh, a Utah-based PEO network called Teamwork Group, and I found this on Business Wire. Why I like this story is I worked with uh, the GNA president and CEO, John Allen, who has serious ties to Utah, so most of his childhood in Utah. Went to the University of Utah and Brigham Young. I'll just assume he's Mormon, but let's not make that assumption. But what I loved about John is, like, we people talk about integrity. Like, if you know, they talk about it a lot, especially in business. Mm-hmm. John's one of those guys that actually has it. Like, he doesn't have to talk about it. He lives it. And uh, I worked with him 15 years ago. It was like I worked with him yesterday. Like, I can still remember things that he said. And did and made me how he made me feel just a great guy. So um, I love seeing things come across the wire where I know the people. Uh, yeah. And in this case, I'm just really, really happy for GNA Partners because they're just expanding their business, PO business, and they're expanding it into his kind of his hometown or his home base. And so I like that as well for him. So very nice. Good well, for I'm them. I'm not going to add anything to that because, there you, go. you know, I won't mess it up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I, I found this and, you know, I, I thought about like, is it really interesting? Yeah. yeah we'll Wonder see. School. Okay. So the, it was interesting to me as I started to think more about it in my local area where I live. Right. There are, so where I used to live in the city, there's daycare every block. Like right. it didn't matter. Like, you may not be able to get in. Right. But they were there. There was 80 of them in a neighborhood. Where I'm at now, there's not a lot. They're yeah. spaced out, and they're god-awful expensive. Let me just tell you, they're expensive, <laughs> right? So anyhow, so Wonder School acquires substitute teaching staffing platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and another one last month um, was is uh, another one they acquired last month early day. So anyhow, this is an ed tech play. Okay, so outside of learning, which – there's a ton of learning plays in talent acquisition and an right. HR, right. Uh, all AI base, et cetera, et cetera. Just general ed tech has really kind of been overlooked. It's like it's education. It's boring, right? Anyhow, this is more of a marketplace. It's still categorized under ed tech, which is why I say that. 
but this is more of a marketplace uh, for care, child care services, right. uh, but not just like care.com or babysitters or people right. like that. These are actual child care providers. And there's also there, they also work with local municipalities to help spin up child care centers. Right. So I may be a certified child care um, you know, person and I want to create my child care center. Well, that's a lot of money. There's a lot of things I need to do. Wonder School is working with local municipalities to help build that infrastructure for people that want to do this. And what was interesting to me here is the amount of parents that I know personally who are affected by not having child care. Oh, yeah. Parents. Right? Yeah. yeah. Parents. I mean, like, one can't go to work, the other can, or, you know, vice versa. Because you're either paying thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars a month plus to put your child into a Goddard school or something like that, right? But there's not a lot of small child care. They're nannies, and so yeah, I like I think, this because they're building that infrastructure for local. In I see it here. I, th I think that can be really I think effective. The, the way that I think that this impacts the listener is thinking about benefits and offering benefits differently to different employees. So, like, my children are a little bit older, your children are a little bit older. This mm -hmm. doesn't impact us. So no, if this were a not. benefit and a benefits package, we wouldn't utilize it. But, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we struggled with this or you struggled with this, and we would love for an employer to have had some type of relationship with service yeah. providers, EAPs, and et cetera, where they could actually help us with this. Yeah. So I think this is kind of looking at the mix of your employee benefits and saying, okay, who needs this? Great. Y'all use that. Okay. Who needs this other thing? Okay. Y'all, you know, y'all use right. this. And so I think uh, this cookie cutter approach to benefits that we've used for forever. Like we talked last Doesn't week work. about pre-menopause and, and menopause. Like there's actual things that can help folks uh, that are going through that. Like this is one of those deals. Like that's a very specific 45, they, as, as they detailed it, 45 to 55. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is something that's a different age group. Uh, yeah. And, or or at, a, at a certain point in your life, let's just say. Yeah, a certain here. point in your life. Like, yeah. so I like, I like the story. I like the acquisition, but I like the idea of how people think about, will, should think about benefits differently in the future. Right. And kind of personalizing them to the employee. Yeah. Yep. There's a lot out there. Okay. I've got another one. Uh, this, this is an outside our industry acquisition yep. that I think will be inside our industry at some point, if not them, then somebody doing what they do. Uh, so Webflow uh, acquires mm -hmm. a company called Intellimize. Uh, so essentially, they, they've done this to add AI-powered web page personalization. So think, mm -hmm. think um, I don't know, I'm browsing somewhere, I come to your website, and it's just your standard website. Here's what we do, here's about us, here's yeah, how yeah. we do it, here's how you buy. It's not personalized to me. Yeah, and my this, what I'm doing, where I came from, what I'm doing, all of that stuff, right? So here's here's where I think this is important um, in talent acquisition, career sites, mm -hmm. right? Benefits page, just a company in general. So think of you know pre-application or even post-application interviews, all of these people that are doing research on right. your company. If I let's see, I'm identified in your system as I have an interview coming up in two weeks. Right. I was just on a, I was on Glassdoor. Clearly I was on there for a reason. I'm on Glassdoor. Then I ended up on your website and you're able to see, I came from Glassdoor reviews. Now I'm on your website and I'm searching for whatever I'm searching for. You can tie that back to me and personalize that experience and provide me right. with the proper information that I need um, rather than just your standard jargon. Right now, you can drive candidate flow. You can drive whatever you need. Drive them wherever you need. What, what you do, I, I think this is going to be the next iteration of most of our yeah. sites. Our career sites. So we just talked about personalization and benefits. This is personalization in the, uh, let's say for this particular uh, case, the candidate experience. Mm -hmm. exactly. So having a personalized. So you and I both were looking at the same job, yet we've come from and have different interests. 
And if someone knows that, they can create content with Gen AI. And mm -hmm. otherwise, they can create a different experience that would be more tailored to me yeah. than, in, than you, which gets an uptick in that person then yeah. making the application. Even, so Even just imagery. Yeah. Yeah, Just in, I, I come from, I don't know, my background or wherever I'm coming from, I'm a hockey player. Yeah, guns and okay. rattlesnakes. Yep. If you have, yeah, if you if you have an outdoors program or a group that does outdoors, that's going to be for you. Maybe it's Good hockey call. for me, right? And I'm seeing that engagement around. I, I love it. I think this, I know there's companies that are trying this. I do some of this, but they don't do what Webflow does. Um, these guys are pretty good. All right, we got about seven stories left. Let's just jump into research. How Americans feel about transparency. This is a, US, a USA Today article, so please go take a look at that. So it's a beautiful research, actually. So if you're ever trying to make the business case for pay transparency, this has actually got some great stats for you. 83% of Americans believe employees would benefit from full, trans, full salary transparency. I'm not going to get too much into it go go look at the report pick the things apart that you mm -hmm. like but i like the idea first of all it's a good study and all the numbers are really great and uh again if if you're trying to make that business case internally you're going to need studies and you're going to need graphics you're going to need those things that you can then make the business case for why that's a good idea all right i've got one here love bombing you ever hear of love bombing um, I'm going to say, I, if I don't look at it in Urban Dictionary, probably no. Yeah. It's a, so, so Greenhouse released a, a survey or a report uh, on bait and switch and love bombing. And so bait okay. and switch we get, right? So this yep. is all about poor hiring practices. So right. what I found really interesting here, so it was across 1,200 um, 1200 job seekers, 53% and 53% on both sides stated Bait and switch, 53%, 53% said love bombing were cited as the biggest frustration. So why I like this or why I want to share it with you and everybody is love bombing. Hmm. Love bombing is telling you how amazing you are. That is – your background's tremendous. Everything you do is amazing. So this is the employer to the – The recruiter candidate. to the candidate saying yeah. how amazing they are and how great they are in the application process, how well the they think they're going to be received. Is the, is the bait and switch opposite? Is it the candidate uh, or is it just – this? I, is I, all... didn't, I didn't go too far into that okay. part. I'm assuming bait and switch is just here's what the job is uh, It's visually. both employer to candidate. Got it. Right. So – but the, the love – but then they don't get the job. Mm-hmm. After being told how amazing they are, they've gotten their hopes up, they've really well, gotten on their side. There's, there's context to amazing. You're amazing, but there's also 85 other people that also apply. Also, also amazing. are amazing, yeah. Now, is the word amazing amazing anymore? So have we, did, have we taken the meaning out right. of the word amazing, which I think is probably something to, the, to think about. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll drop the links for all the research down there. But the, the bigger play, the bigger thing for me that I was thinking is recruiters need training. They're not able to have direct conversation, kind of like a nurse or a doctor with bedside manner. Nobody wants to hear how amazing your cancer is. You got cancer at stage four. Look, you're in trouble. Yeah. Be direct, right? And I think the maybe not the best analogy, but 100%. <laughs> I think you get <laughs> you're dying. You get you got dying. two days. What? <laughs> Let's get rid of it. I'm gonna son. go dark real quick. All right. Yeah, that escalated quickly. Cipher <laughs> survey 300 HR decision makers that revealed the biggest workforce challenges. For UK organizations this year, so they're very specific. It had to be the chief people officer, CHRO, what mm -hmm. they call HRDs or HR directors, etc. You can find this on uh, CIPHR.com. Great infographics. So what struck me out of all of this stuff, so they're great stats. And they're talking to 300 leaders, and this is in the UK, so it's very specific uh, in, in, in two ways. But what I found fascinating about this research is that it goes through 50 different things that are important. Mm -hmm. None of what one, one reached over the 50% threshold and that's retaining employees mm -hmm. and keeping top talent. Everything else was below 46, 45, 45, 42, 41. Everything else was below that. So immediately I thought to myself, okay, well, why couldn't they agree? You know, on one level, like why couldn't they, what, what, why couldn't they get something that said, hey, okay, 80% of the people said this. you got to go fix this one thing, and it'll watershed to fix these other things. Yeah. So 
It also highlights how rich the tapestry of HR is. The challenges aren't just one thing. The challenges are most, like 41% ensuring a positive workforce a workplace culture. Okay, so is that related to retaining employees? Like if you were to take that one out, hmm. would that number have been more in retaining top employees uh, or empo retaining employees in general? So I, when I read that thing, I'm I was looking for the 92% believe, you know, do this. And what I didn't mm -hmm. get there was that, which also kind of like, okay, well, why is it so bifurcated? It is so bifurcated because people need that choice to then say, no, it's actually more about a positive workforce, uh, workplace culture. That's actually what we should be about. 41% of the yeah. uh, 30, 300 people said that that was important to them. Yeah, I, I think so, it illustrates it's, it's a healthy, there's healthy conversations in HR right now. Yeah. And it, where I don't think four or five, six years ago there was it was here's what it is here's what we right. need now it's we're open we're having conversations and we're seeing more fragmented outcomes i think and this this is what that what that does all right last research piece we have for this week is uh, the 23 24 aflac can't use can't say that that use that duck noise every I time really i really just want to go aflac <laughs> Seriously, it's a workforces report. This is their 13th year annual research examining benefits, trends, and attitudes. So it's at AFLEC.com. You can go take a look at it. So I'll only do one stat, but there's some great stats in there. 74% um, of Americ American workers grapple with stress, and women are disproportionately affected. Is this work so, stress or yeah, work, work stress? stress? Work stress. Yeah. So work stress. So go take a look at the study. It's, I mean, it's, I, I, I think I told Ryan in pre-show, it's, it's terrifying, horrifying, hey, you know, fascinating uh, when they uh -huh. do these things. And they've got, what's cool about it is they've got the last reports on the landing page. So you can go look at the last years and see what was heavy there just to kind of see longitudinally over 13 years, what's, what's actually come right. in and out have been important. So uh, go take a look at that. After Black. All right, we got some dollars being thrown around this week. Four. We got, yeah, we got a couple to talk about. So a company called LayerX uh, landed huh? a $26 million Series A. Uh, so companies are so – this, this ties into more of a remote and in-office workforce. Okay, so we're, we're hybrid now and companies are coming back. Some are staying out. Uh, so companies are not, they're not heavily reliant on browser-based and SaaS-based uh, applications. Okay. Right. So this opens the organizations and the employees to just a ton of risk, right? Data leaks, uh, yep, identity yep, theft, yep. 30 extensions, phishing, all of the above. Uh, so what LayerX does is this is a browser, I'm sorry, this is an extension that works with any browser of the organizations or the employee's choice. It works regardless of where the employee base. So this is a risk mitigation extension uh, oh, like that, that. Good. Yeah, that organizations are now you can use to, you know, as they get away from SaaS based programs, et cetera. Um, and they, I, think browser I think it's smart. I yeah. think first of all, uh, this is just mitigating risk. It's going to kind of feel a little big brotherish because people are going to know more about what you're doing and where you're doing it and when you're doing it and all that other yep. stuff. But it, I think you, the business has to protect itself. Yeah. Oh, and, so, and it crosses over between business and personal devices. Mm -hmm. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. Let me give you one. Bethesda's Keep Company raises $1.4 million in a fundraising round. So I love this because I got it at the Daily Record. And uh, the Daily Record goes city by city, country by country, state by state, all that stuff. So Keep, Keep Company is an employer-offered benefit that prevents burnout and attrition for working parents and caregivers. Hey, we've and this is a steady drumbeat here. Aging hmm. population, we're going to see more and more of these services being offered from employers to employees. Again, kind of like we we've talked about these different benefits. Yeah. Uh, okay, for some people, their parents are aging; they don't know what to do. It's just like uh, what you brought up earlier with uh, childcare. Right. You know, this, 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 at a certain stage in your life, you need different things, like a Swiss Army knife. You know, you don't you don't need the screwdriver; you need a pair of scissors. So uh, let's keep an eye on key company and that was at the daily record .com. All right. You are going to make me want to be an HR person. 
Okay. I'm See? starting to get the feels of it just creating happens. custom programs for people to make them happy. It happens. <laughs> no, it happened never. to me. Never going to happen to me. Never. <laughs> no, no. Well, I shouldn't right. say that. If I ever need a job, yeah, I'll keep my idea. So. so, okay. So Wallet as a service startup. This is a company uh, called Ansa. They, hmm. yeah, Wass. They, they raise $14 million. Yep. Okay, so this is really interesting to me. I really like this, and I and I I kind of want to use it for something. I don't know what, but I want to use it for something. So, this is a branded payment solution for merchants. So, this is more for you know to get away from the credit cards, right? The credit right. card fees and all of this stuff. Um, so they they pitch it as it's a way to build brand loyalty, reduce fees, so on and so forth. So I, as a deli or whatever, have a branded wallet. I can give my, impl- my employees, my um, patrons, and they can purchase. I can put loyalty programs. I don't get fees. They don't get fees, et cetera, et cetera, right? Quick pay. I can put, they can put money in their wallet and just use it at my establishment. Love the idea. So I thought, how does recruiting use something like this? And what would be most effective? And I I kept going back to staffing. So staffing gets a, you know, they charge big fees. They get paid late. They get exorbitant fees, right? Merchant fees or ACH fees or withdrawal, whatever it is, right? So how do we change this, right? So three things come to my mind. We'll get you kind of take on. So for CX, right? Uh, recruiters can reimburse candidates Then candidates coming in for interviews. Candidates can be re- recruit. Recruiters can reimburse candidates for travel, for parking mm-hmm. during the interview pro- immediately. Right. They sign up, they have the wallet for whatever company you're coming in for an interview. There's a $40 parking fee, a $20 train fee, whatever it is. Yep. Tolls. Mm-hmm. Tolls. You're reimbursed immediately right through a wallet. Yeah. Um, that was one thing. Second was, so recruiters and agencies, I think, can use a brand that payment experience that is fast, reduces fees um, to a really tiny amount. And that means a lot to an agency of two or three recruiters that can have access to something like this. And the other thing is instant payout on referrals. So if mm-hmm. candidates are referring, employees are referring, or people in my network are referring people to me, they can come through my branded experience and get paid out immediately under my moniker, my company, uh, as a recruiter, building loyalty programs, et cetera. So similar to like a daily pay or something like that, right. um, where you don't have to wait 90 days. Yet no. You're getting paid, it's, and it's, it's all through my brand. work and all that other stuff. I, yeah. I, I, li- I really like this idea, especially for recruiters. Um, you know, we've we, – We've historically done a very poor job with candidates in terms mm-hmm. of paying them back. It's just on them. Like whatever expense you had to pay to get here. Just get to the, interview. the interviews. Yeah, it's, that's on you, Holmes. Uh, I, I like this as kind of treating the candidate better, treating them more mm-hmm. humane and saying, hey, listen, how'd you get here? Okay, great. Done deal. Use this app. Download this. You got your money back. Not a problem. Yeah. Like, Not I like that, that experience. Companies can do that today. There's just – it's, it's difficult for them to do. And it's not branded. It's, no. They can do it through Venmo or, or it, do exactly. it through something like that. It's a branded like experience this way. I like Love that. Love it. I like that. And for, for staffing firms, they could brand it as the, as the client. So However if they someone's want. applying yeah. through them to another company, they could brand it as that other company so that they actually have a really, really branded experience. Either way. Yeah. All right. Last story. Here we go. Amplifier security emerges from stealth to bridge the divide between the workforce and security with AI and human-in-the-loop automation. I have not seen this human-in-the-loop automation phrase before. I was going to say, it gave me the heebie-jeebies. So, so uh, <laughs> Amplifier, it's AmplifierSecurity.com. Take a look at the press release. It's 3.3 uh, 3. 3 million, so it's... Okay. it's uh, I, I think they even call it a seed round, so mm-hmm. it's it's not a huge amount of money. But what I what what I like one phrase is transforms how employees interact with corporate security tools, enhancing security without hindering productivity. So what th- I thought about is the technology is actually helping humans interacting with the different security a- applications that they have access to. So it's a bridge tech. So as I understand it, it bridges the human experience with the technology experience. 
<laughs> and uh, so, first of all, if that's if true, will we see more of a trend with it? Like, because you know, right now you have technology on one side, human on the other, and then, okay, how do we get them to talk? How do we get them to interact with? Right. And again, how do we get everything to be more productivity uh, productive? And so, uh, keep an eye on this. I don't. I don't know if people are going to use this human in the loop. Uh, phrase. I uh, wouldn't use I, it on a T-shirt. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> human in the loop. Like, human in the loop. Like that's pretty <laughs> yeah. cool. It kind of yeah, gave I'm me like a loop. I'm in the human in the loop. <laughs> I'm the human. That's it. That's all I got, man. For this, awesome. for this last week, that's all I got. Yeah, this is a busy week, but a lot of good stories out there. Uh, we got some travel coming up, so we will yeah. publish that at some point. And uh, when we see you out there. Please come say hello. I'm going to throw my my shameless plug in there. Please send me some clothes. I'm out of clothes. I need more clothes. I just want you more t-shirts. t-shirts. Send me your t-shirts and hats, people. Please. Come Especially on. if there's sun shirts because it's summertime. Anyhow, right. love is like it. Subscribe everywhere. We will see you next time.